in typical summer in North Carolina fashion and has decided to thunderstorm about the time I need to film. But as this is the only time I have to film today, uh, we're going to make this short and sweet. And if you hear thunder, uh, it's vibes. Just let it happen. So today we are doing the mid-year freakout tag. I did this last year uh, for the first time because I started my channel in July and it really helped me kind of like think about what I've read this year. As opposed to last year, this year I've been doing reviews for all the books I've read so it's been really fun to kind of like see how much I remember of them more so this year than I did last year. Um, and I've actually read a lot more already this year as of right now. Um, what I finished yesterday, I finished Clap When You Land yesterday. So I've officially read 60 books out of my goal of 63 books, which is fantastic. Because I always have this unofficial goal of 100, right? You know, I always would like to have 100 books read. But I try to get realistic with it. But I've got myself a little cheat sheet because otherwise I would not remember, like right off the bat, 60 books. I, I need to plan and I need to see it written down. Um, and I'm not going to be able to hold some of these up because I don't have physical copies of them, but I'll try to put the images on the screen so you can see what I'm talking about. I do have a few that I have, I can put my hands on, but that's about it. The very first question is the best book so far. So we're already really difficult with what to choose here um, because I've read like so many good books this year. Thank God. I've had a really good reading year. A lot of fours, four and a halfs, fives. So two that I have put here to answer it have been uh, When No One Is Watching by Alyssa Cole, which is a thriller based on um, gentrification and is very, very good. And The Wolf in the Woodsman by Ava Reed. And that one just came out, it just released, and it is based on Jewish mythology. Um, and it was beautiful, very atmospheric, loved the characters, loved the story. Um, and those two, I think, were the best for me. But also, I have others that are really good to answer some of these other questions. Honestly, most of my read books this year could be answered by that question because they were amazing. But anyway, moving on. Don't want this to be a really long video. Second question is best sequel. That one goes to The Silvered Serpents. Um, I really enjoyed the world building and the character development that continued from The Gilded Wolves. And I'm really looking forward to the third book that comes out later this year. The next question also could be answered with a long, long list of books, and that is a new release you want to read but haven't gotten to yet. I have so many anticipated books written down for this year that I do not own or do not have access to yet and would like to read, but the top on my list are For the Wolf, The Nature of Witches, and The Chosen and the Beautiful. These were on my anticipated reads list. I have them in physical form. And so they are pretty high up on my list. The next question is most anticipated release for the second half of the year. Again, I have a massive list of those, but the two, no, the three that come to mind um, right now are The Excalibur Curse, which is the last book in the uh, series up here by Kristen White about Guinevere. Um, Truth of the Divine, which is the second book in the I don't remember what the series is called by Lindsay Ellis. Uh, it's the sequel to Axiom's End, which I loved last year. And then the third is The Bronzed Beasts by Roshani Tchotchke, which is the third book in the Gilded Wolf series. But those are the most anticipated that are getting released in the back half of the year. Next question, the biggest surprise. Um, The biggest surprise for me is probably how much I really like the Taylor Jenkins Reid books. Um, I read or listened to The Seven Hub Husbands of Evelyn Hugo and uh, Daisy Jones and the Six, and I really enjoyed both of those. I think that I enjoyed them because I listened to them on audiobook, but I really liked that I enjoyed that author. I didn't know if I was because she's very hyped, um, but I was glad to see that the books kind of lived up to the hype. Biggest disappointment? Um, probably Angel Catbird. It's just like cat propaganda, if that makes sense. Like, it's it's made in tandem with an organization that's like spay and neuter your pets, make sure your cats are inside because they're harming the wildlife and birds and and stuff. And it was just it felt weird. It was it was really strange. It just wasn't the story wasn't compelling. It didn't feel like it actually had any kind of soul to it, which is really disappointing because it's an Atwood. Um, and then Wilder Girls. Wilder Girls just didn't deliver what I was promised based on the hype and. Um, I'm just, I'm not really interested in reading anything else from Rory Power. Uh, both of her books have done that for me where I thought they were going to be something amazing and they ended up kind of being like, uh, by the end of it. So those were probably my two biggest disappointments. 
Next question is fave new author. I'm really interested to see what Tracy Dion does with the Legendborn series and anything else she chooses to write in the future. I think her world building is very, um, while slow paced, I believe it takes the pace it's supposed to. Um, and it was really interesting to see. Her characters are also very well done um, for the world she has placed them in. Um, Roshani Chokshki, who did the Gilded Wolf series, I'm going to have to read like her whole backlog because I really, really like her characters and I think that she's really good at fleshing them out well and having them interact with others and I really like that. Um, and Celeste Ng, I think for literary fiction and like kind of a mystery aspect to it, I'm really going to need to pick up more of her writing. I don't have a copy of Little Fires Everywhere, but I'm going to need to get my hands on one. Newest fictional crush. I don't, I don't usually answer this. I think last year I was like, eh, just the cast of Darker Shades of Magic. Um, I really like Nick from Legendborn, um, but I could like a lot of folks from Legendborn. Those are good characters. Uh, Inej from Six of Crows and Gaspar from The Wolf and the Woodsman. Um, what can I say? I like them deeply involved with their religious practices, I guess. Um, Gaspar, I feel like it's probably not the way to pronounce that properly. It does have accents over the A's, and anywhere you look online, it's like, oh yeah, it's Gaspar, but I feel like it's like Gaspar, because it's more Hungarian-based. So, maybe look that up if you're wanting to hear someone that's not an idiot pronounce the name. But anyway, he's he's really good in that book. Um, again, that list could probably be longer if characters I really like, but I don't know. I don't have, I don't get crushes on people. I really did like Cardin, though. He's awful, but I like him. Next question, your new favorite character, the entire cast of the Gilded Wolves books. All of them, just that, that ensemble cast is fantastic. She does such a good job. A book that made you cry. We do not have time for that list. I have said it before, and I will say it again, and we'll probably say it at the end of the year once my reading is finished. I have read so many books about grief or trauma or processing grief or trauma or loss that it's just really at this point if I pick up a book it's likely to make me cry like and also I'm a really easy crier anyway hi it's me I'm a Pisces um so it doesn't take a lot it's not really it doesn't mean anything to get put on a list of books that are gonna make me cry is all I'm saying so I just didn't even bother answering that one a book that made you happy um I wouldn't say any of them were like haha made me happy but I did really enjoy Rich People Problems and Tokyo Ever After. I felt they were lighthearted and funny enough that um, I was never really depressed reading them, especially Tokyo Ever After. That's got that really lighthearted YA, like, unbelievable situation thing going for it, and I think that that's going to make people a lot more happy. Even given the situations that happen to her and the discussions that are had, they are kept at a very light kind of uh, level so you can process it better and I just I really enjoyed that book it made me happy to read it the next question is the most beautiful book you have bought or read I do not own a copy of the firekeeper's daughter but that would go on this list um I have bought a copy but it has not got here yet and I need to film this video before it gets here of the wolf and the woodsman which is also fantastically beautiful filled with little easter eggs for the story uh on the cover and i love that and then i have two in person that i read this year that i think fit um almost maine which is a novelization of the play almost maine but it's got a little bit of additions in it i really appreciate the additions and i just love the simplicity of this cover i think it looks very um very cute and just simple and i love that um, it's a lot like the stories in that regard. And then, minus the absolutely stupid printed on fake sticker, uh, Home Fire. So let me hold it so you can see it. Look at, look at this. This is probably going to win for the whole year. This book is absolutely gorgeous and easily could have fit in a lot of other categories because it was also amazing. Um, but this cover is beautiful and it's pretty underneath too. It's got this etching in it and we love that. Um, but those are probably the most beautiful books, but I've read a lot of other ones that easily could have fit in here that it was really hard just making the list for books. The last question is, what do you need to read by the end of the year? And I know that means specifically, like, what books do you need to read that you've said you're going to read? But here's the thing, I'm not reading ARCs this year, so I don't have anything I'm obligated to read. I literally can read whatever I want. And what I need to read is three more books because my goal is 63 books. So I need to read three more books and unofficially I need to read like, you know, till I get to 100, um, which 
will probably happen at the rate I'm going through audiobooks. Um, but that's it. Those are the questions. That was the tag. Uh, that was really fun. It's, again, interesting to see the, the differences in how I'm able to remember my books this year based just solely on reviewing everything. If you are interested in anything else I have been reading or to hear more about them, I have some videos I have posted where I've discussed the first 50 books that I read this year. And always, my Goodreads is linked in the description. I review every single book as detailed as I possibly can without, like, spoiling them um, in case you're interested in my deeper thoughts about things since I don't do wrap-ups. But that's been it. Uh, let me know kind of what you've been reading, uh, what you're interested in for the future. I'm always interested to hear what's releasing that's got people excited. Uh, so let me know in the comments and thank you for watching. The rain has made you stupid. Why are you running around? Why are you exercising? You hate exercising. I think I'm going to take a nap.